philanthropic dollars were going to women and girls. So because of that, they all actually met on a porch, Emily Rutherford's porch, and they said, let's do something about this. So the Women's Fund was created. And our mission statement is to transform the lives of women and girls by mobilizing the collective power and passion of all women working together. So obviously, women was said a lot in that sentence, but we see this as a whole community effect. Our recent Womenomics report, if you've heard about that, we looked at the status of economic self-sufficiency of a woman in central Ohio and what that looks like. And we found that one in four women-led households are not economically self-sufficient. So, so goes the woman's household, so does the family. So children and the husbands are all affected in that. And so we are working to create conversation spaces and to give grants that help change that. We watch the Be a Man video. And we do this all with a gender lens. So we use words a lot in our office like gender lens and gender equality. And we recently had a conversation that people don't know what that is. And we're just using this vocabulary <coughs> that the six of us in the office understand and our grant partners understand. But what does that look like? So once a year, we have this great grant reading opportunity. Unfortunately, it's for women only, but if you're interested, you should talk to me. We have 160 women and girls from the community come together, and they read the grants for us. We also read them. We're not giving our job away. But then we have them tell us what we should fund. So it's a way for a girl who's 14 to sit across the table from a CEO and a stay-at-home mom and to have that conversation of, is this going to be powerful? Is this going to impact the community? And why does that matter? So some of the questions we ask them, is there an attitude towards women and girls? Is this fulfilling a need that doesn't already exist? And how does that affect? So this is our vision map. So right now it looks a little blank, but we created this last year to kind of walk through as kind of a choose your own adventure for our board members and for those in the community that talk about our work, because since we do social change and not direct service, what does that mean? So we say we are creating gender equality and influence through women's philanthropy. Because like I said, only 7% of philanthropic dollars are going that way. And about 20 years ago, women weren't stepping forward and putting their names on their donations. So our founders want to do everything with women's philanthropy in mind. That's why we list our donors um, just by alphabetical order, not by the amount they give. And we also always list the wife first if it's a couple giving or the woman first in that situation. And we do this with our research in mind. So like I said, we just did our womenomics report to look at economic self-sufficiency. Our other priority areas include life skills for girls and leadership for women. And we've done research projects around that as well. A few years ago, we did one girl that looked at the status of girls in central Ohio. And from that, we saw that one in 10 girls are considering suicide or were more likely to get pregnant than other surrounding areas. And we looked at why, and then we use that when we advocate in the community how we build capacity with whether there are grant partners or our community partnerships, different ways we choose to collaborate. So we work with the YWCA a lot. We also worked with the Greater Columbus Sports Commission last year because Branded, which looked at how girls are marketed and how athletics are played with girls versus boys, and we had a huge community conversation around that and brought in somebody from ESPNW. And like I said, how we make grants. So our grants are in three priority areas, life skills for girls, leadership for women, and economic self-sufficiency for women. And then all of that increases when we educate. Are we doing a community partnership, whether it's our big key holder event with a celebrity to inform the community? Are we engaging the community? And how are we raising awareness? And we do that all for the sake of amplifying the voices of women and girls. So we measure with social change. And social change is a different way of looking at it. We sometimes use a metaphor like a river. At the bottom of the river, there are all these people drowning. And there are great programs that are pulling them out of the river. They're saving their lives. But we say, let's go to the top of the stream and see why they're drowning in the first place. So social change looks at going to the root of the problem and changing it. So when we have someone apply for a grant, we ask if they're shifting in any of these areas. Is it going to reframe how it's defined by society? Is it going to change the policy or lobby? And we're looking at that a lot right now, especially after our Womenomics report, which I have a few copies of, if anyone would like that at the end. So this just looks at how social change and direct service are a little different. They're both very important, and like I said, all of our grant partners are very invested in direct service, but we also challenge them to think about social change. We have some amazing grant partners which are on your tables um, for this year, and in October, on the 6th and the 20th, we'll be looking for next year if you're interested. So our grant making 